Hello, this is Jen, and today I have an exciting A Soyev, A Song of Ice and Fire unboxing. So this literally just came out of the box, which is down here on the floor. And I do have a second Unsullied Pikeman, um, so I won't be opening both, but I've been waiting for these for so long. I play Targaryens, and I play Stark, my husband plays Lannisters, and he is getting Greyjoy soon, so you should be able to see some Greyjoys soon as well. So these are some cool new attachments for the kind of starter factions, main factions, the Lannisters and Starks, and then we have Unsullied Pikemen and Mother of Dragons. So I think I'm gonna leave them for last because to me they're the most exciting for sure. So they can hang out in the background for a bit while we take a look at these cool attachment boxes. Okay, I play Stark so I'm gonna go with them first. my trusty dusty hobby knife. I know I have never put any A Song of Ice and Fire content on my channel so far. I've been meaning to, but there's just so much to talk about with all the different hobbies that I enjoy. <laughs> do have a little tripod as well, but it points in a weird direction, so I like to just do <laughs> my little pop socket on top of a stack of books a lot of the time. Okay, so on the back it will tell us what is inside. Two veterans, two survivalists, one guardian, and two champions. It says it requires the starter set to play. Sometimes you can get this for about um, like $80. I think it was $70 or $80, maybe even $60 when my husband and I got, uh, Gus, I guess, finally pulled the trigger. is great and small from across the vast north flock to the dire wolf banner in the war of the five kings the starks are known for their integrity justice and loyalty their bannermen fight all the fiercer with the knowledge that their cause is honorable stark officers readily face down threats that would send lesser men as well. 
confusing, I'm sorry. Um, so I'm sure you'll be able to see in the Targaryen box, but usually you have a little movement tray. And it has ranks of soldiers, so that's why it's like a mass battle game. And you can upgrade them by replacing one of them with something like these guys. Sometimes your leader will be um, within a unit, sometimes on their own, or sometimes they might just be tactical. And there's like a tactics board. I can't recall what it's exactly called, but um, anyway. So this is a great game. It's not a board game. It's, like I said, more like a mass battle game. But the units aren't humongous, so I don't know. It's kind of like some kind of gray area between mass battle and like skirmish but it does have movement trays so I mean it is mass battle okay we have our little card pack pardon me so I will open those up in a jiffy but let's look at what we came here for right the miniatures so they do color the miniatures or I guess do them in colored plastic based on the faction. So the Stark ones are kind of a bluish gray. Oh no, I cut the plastic. Oh well. Now these are the kind of packages where you keep the plastic because it is a built-in storage system. Up room on a shelf or like a foam case, you've got it like this. Okay, oh, these are nice. I love the cavalry, uh, which I have a lot of since I play <laughs> Targaryens. As you can see, they are pre assembled. It's very hard plastic, so you don't often get bent parts. Love his helmet. Awesome. I love that. I was drawn to him first because I love the cavalry so much. I don't know if the horses always look good. painted any of these up, but they paint up very well, as I have seen online. Okay. So, we have two each of the rest. the eye patch <laughs> and the hair. Very cool. I wasn't really planning to make this video, but they came today, so I had to see them. Might as well do it on camera. Oh, I love these. Weird little So much equipment. So he has his pack and his little sleeping roll. Little bags of stuff. Pouches. He's dual wielding. He's ready. And I actually like his little stump. Don't know 
always like when everybody's standing on something, but that doesn't happen as frequently in this army. I guess even in this game. I mean, I like the stump more because it's like something different. But also, he's kind of like a woodsman, right? He's loving it. <laughs> yeah, he seems to say. I love the layers on his clothes. duds yet. Alright. Oh yeah, another heroic pose. So many different textures, right? You've got like that makes me think of Indiana Jones in the Last Crusade when he gets to the room with the different grails and the guardian is wearing one of those chain mail hoods like that. Okay, let's see our cards really quick. Actually, let me... I wish it wasn't quite so tightly sealed, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Okay, so let's see, do we have something special that the like add-on characters or like captains and things like that can do and it will tell you when it can be done so when this unit passes a panic test which is definitely an important thing in this game um, d3 wounds on an engaged enemy that's pretty amazing actually usually like on cavalry will have maybe two wounds, two or three, usually one for each, like, infantry, and you just remove people when wounds are taken. Okay, the Chronic Man Survivalist. Plus one move. Honestly, to me, that's better than this. I don't retreat very frequently. <laughs> Maybe I should, but I do okay. The Marmont Veteran. Oh, yes. With the hair and the sweet eye badge. The Marmonts are cool, for sure. Okay. Alright, they're hardened. An additional hit. That's nice. So the points value is down here, by the way. So let's see. The Chronic Man Survivalist is two, but the rest were one so far. One is really good for like the K. 
cool pitchfork. If the scene attacks an enemy that has not activated this round, it may reroll any pieces. Hmm. That's interesting. Could be very handy. unit has only one remaining rank and suffers so three wins. Okay, so they're like going out fighting, right? <laughs> and they're slashing so much that they might slash each other a little bit. Okay, and the sworn sword captain. That last guy we just looked at. Okay, vulnerable. It makes... Yeah, I can't remember what that effect is. There's like three... other attachments for Lannisters. Look at them, how fancy they are. Yes. This gold beneath the casterly rock flows freely in the War of the Five Kings. Hiring the best troops money can buy, House Lannister's professional soldiers are tough and disciplined, ready to shed their enemy's blood for coin. Kitted out in the finest weapons and armor, these officers are adept at leading from the front and keeping their men focused on the battle. There's a criticism to be levied at Lannister forces. It's that money can't buy loyalty. But that said, money certainly buys a great deal of steel. Okay, once again, you need the starter set to play. So we have one butcher, two veterans, two turncoats, two captains, two champions, and two enforcers. So again, we've got one cavalry unit, add on, and then to each of these infantry guys. Alright, let's check it out. Ooh, he's a Clegane Butcher. Sandor and Gregor. By the way, I do love the art. Lannister Lion. This looks to me like, I mean, I'm not an expert, but that is definitely for the great joys, right? The squid. Let's see. Some lions. We've got, oh, who's that? Hydra, I'm not sure. Baratheon. Or is that dragons? That's dragons, right? That's dark area. More like a hydra than a dragon. <laughs> I mean, here's the usual one. I mean, that's more obviously a dragon. My bad. Okay. Okay, so. Let's release them from their plastic. As you might have guessed, he 
the Lannisters are in this kind of light red because Targaryens are in a deep red. so chunky. It doesn't really fit with the Lannisters, but it is a Clegane, the butcher. <gasps> it needs to be scraped a little bit. Very nice. So you can see it looks fancier, right? It has the Very noble. Okay. He looks like he's scheming. Like he's got his little money purse. do a great job with the faces. It's very good. Okay. Next up. Ooh, that's nice. The expressions. I mean, they're so expressive in their face. I feel like this banner would be a pain in the ass if you were actually fighting. <laughs> but I like that it gives the illusion there of some movement, not just this cloak, but also that. Again, nice and straight. Okay, I'm saving top left because he looks fabulous and I can't wait to see him. <laughs> okay, this one's interesting to me. I love his shield. <laughs> and that perfectly straight sword is great. And very dynamically posed as well. Very nice. More awesome cloaks to paint. So heroic. Wow, that is fancy armor. Straight, straight sword. Beautiful. Loads of beautiful cloth as well. Wonderful. And the last fabulous man striding forth. This plumage. something. I don't know. He wasn't actually my fave. I think. Who was my fave? Man, this one's tough. I think the fancy man. Okay, let's see what we can learn about them. If you hear music in the background, my husband is playing 
those where you have like um, a dynasty that you play through. Like you play as a king and then when he dies, whoever the heir is, you continue playing on as them. He has a lot of games like that, but I don't You might guess from the points values, there's not a whole lot of points. I feel like it's, gosh, I don't want to say, but 35 was coming to mind, so maybe that's right. It's been a little while since I've played. Okay, let's see. He can order them when an enemy engaged fails a panic test to sow terror. Ooh, another enemy in long range. So it's like they see their comrades failing, and they also get scared. There is, like, a ruler stick. <laughs> I can't remember how long short versus long is. And let's see, when an enemy engaged with it fails a panic test, it becomes weakened. So that's one of those three main status effects. Sentinel Enforcer. I think that was the guy I said I liked the most. He can taunt within short range as long as hmm. Well, it's what you would expect a taunt to be. He's won the turncoat. Deployment, attach this model to an enemy infantry unit, ignoring the usual attachment restrictions. <laughs> so you are providing this by a traitor. Let's see. Once per game at the start of any turn, your opponent may deal this unit one wound to remove it. If they do, this unit gains one condition token of the opponent's choice and may not use order or be the target of friendly tactics cards. Now, honestly, the part of that that is the most helpful is the friendly tactics cards. So you could deny them something really epic. Okay, champion of the faith with his sword on his shield. Let's see, on a success. Oh, so you can heal yourself one or two. Nice, for one point. Assault veteran. I think that's the guy who had the little banner on his weapon. Let's see if it begins the turn. If it began the turn engaged. Plus one to hit and roll plus two dice. Nice. So. And the guard captain, the flouncy fella. The unit would fail a panic test. Kill a model <laughs> to automatically pass. Hey, I mean, it depends on what the unit uh, is doing. If it's imperative that they win, or I guess don't run away, then it makes sense. Okay, on to my faves. The Dark Aryans. We gotta start with the Unsullied, and end with a bang with the Mother of Dragons. Okay, so I do have two boxes of Unsullied Pikemen. I have Unsullied sword, Swordsmen already. They came out with like the first wave of Targaryens, but these are new, and honestly, it's like iconic. The Unsullied Pikemen, the way that they are so regimented and 
move as one. So I just felt it was almost a requirement to get two boxes of them. Okay, I do apologize for all that light coming in the background. I forgot to pull the blinds. I am so sorry. <laughs> okay, so here we are with our Unsullied. And let's see what it says about them. So we have four different mostly riders, right? Dothraki. And a few characters. Try to block out some of that light. <laughs> Maybe I'll do that over here too. There. Maybe I've done it. Okay, so this is the type of movement tree. finger place for you to grab hold of it, which it's a definite, like, something that would be overlooked, but a nice quality of life improvement for sure. So, I mean, you can leave this blank. You don't have to paint anything, obviously, but you could also, you know, add some flock and different things to that to make it look nicer. So, you can see there are 12 in the unit. unit card will tend to look like. Um, it's got our little flavor text on the back, and it looks like it's the same as on the back. It's nine points, so you can see that's a pretty expensive unit, honestly. Okay, so it has four movement, and these are like the defense role and the um, like panic like leadership. So it tells how many dice you roll, like how many attack dice when there's full uh, ranks? One rank missing and two ranks missing. <laughs> so you take off from the back first and you basically, some of them get more fierce the more that they lose, but some of them are like you would expect and they get weaker as it goes down, but it looks like they are perfectly fine until they've lost you know, two ranks, which is pretty amazing. So they have two orders built in. Um, they need a three plus to hit, by the way. Um, so these are good rolls, three plus. And that's pretty good as well. Okay, so they can set for charge. Um, all right, so an extra attack. never have condition tokens because they are unyielding, just like the sword swordsman. All right, so that is our unsullied. Let's look at the models. All right, I already love them.
how straight those spears are. I mean, come on. Oh, love these. Very slick. Definitely have to show more of the um, other Song of Ice and Fire minis and things that we have. We have some mercenaries as well, like some neutral. Um, let me know what would you like to see most. Um, I've got like the starter set in general. We've got Lannisters and neutral, which is like mercenaries and Targaryens. What would you like to see next? Soon I will have great joy whenever they, you know, are actually released. So I will show you my husband's great joy. Other than Greyjoy, would you prefer to see more Targaryens, Lannisters, Starks, or Neutral? These guys are so good. And the last sculpt. So as you can see, this is the deeper red for the similar. They're unsullied. And if any unit could get away with it, it's them. So imagine two more ranks of them. And that's what you get. Awesome. Plus, like I said, comes with its own built-in storage, which honestly, if you are into that many games, that becomes an issue pretty fast. Where do you store? some larger models for this game. Like, uh, there's giants for, um, free folk. Yeah, there's, there's factions we don't play. <laughs> there's Night's Watch and free folk, which, I mean, we like both of them, but these were our fave. Uh, and Baratheon, sorry. So there's three that we don't have. So, I mean, there's pretty much anything that teenagers, I would call them. <laughs> if they were full size, they would never work for the game, in my opinion. Oh, they also came out with mammoths for, I think, free folk. Alright, so I am so excited to see what these look like, honestly. I, I can't tell you how excited I am. Also, I just love already another Daenerys in the starter set, as you would imagine. But this is like her Queen of 
marine phase when the dragons would have been about this size. Okay, so we have Rhaegal, Viserion, and Drogon. Okay, let's read about it. Queen Daenerys Targaryen, the mother of dragons, is a living legend, the most powerful woman in Essos, and possibly the world. She commands legions of unsullied, thousands of mercenaries, and rules the free city of Marine. But in addition to her mighty deeds and wise rule, she also commands the dragons Rhaegal, Viserion, and Drogon. These deadly beasts dominate any battlefield with Daenerys in command, and should their mother take the field, her commands lend human intelligence to their raw cunning sheer ferocity. In conflict after conflict, Daenerys Stormborn's legend continues to grow. I'm so interested how many points these will be. <laughs> right, if you were to take all of them plus Danny, or can you take them separately, or are they a unit? I am so interested to see what will be in here. Also, beautiful, beautiful art there of Daenerys. Their beautiful white gold. So that tells me they're going to move around separately, at least. It would look weird to have three dragons, like, <laughs> on a base. Like one massive base. So this is like the kind of base you would get for, like, a cavalry hero. Um, if you didn't want to put them with a unit. So they each get one of those. And even with those small ones as like the little grabby bits. Okay, let's see. I gotta see the minis. Okay, where's the tape? There's always tape. a good idea with these dragons. Okay, moment of truth. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. It's so squeaky. I was trying not to make that be so loud. Okay. Here we are. Okay, I'm restrained myself and looking at Daenerys first. Lovely. And her outfit is very stately, right? I like how it kind of cascades to the floor. Or the little, like, drain.
textures going on here and these like points are quite sharp the different types of scales and the face is really cool look at those little teeth it reminds me of if you ever see your cat's tiny little front teeth kind of looks like little teeth like that because it's wrapping around the rocks that they chose to sit upon. Love it. So, I mean, though these look kind of small <laughs> next to Daenerys, you can see, you know, they're already quite large. They're not babies. They're, like I said, more like teenage dragons. Young adults. They went with a different pose for each so that we can kind of get a feel for them as different characters in their own right because they are Maybe they're nine each. I'm not sure. Let's read about it. Let's look at the front, basically, in the beginning. Okay. Uh, they are considered juvenile dragons. identical stats. Oh no, they don't. They have different types of fire. <laughs> Golden fire, black fire, and jade fire. <laughs> because they're colored differently. Okay. Alright. These are really good. <laughs> so we have ranged or melee. They are vicious, don't roll to hit. Defender suffers d3 plus 3 wounds, and one enemy within short range becomes panicked because they're like, Is that a freaking dragon? I'm next. No. <laughs> okay, let's read about each. Rhaegar, who is 
is a dick. He has a majestic green and bronze with jet black fangs and claws and eyes that burn with their own heart, or sorry, own heat, brighter than polished shields. While nowhere near fully grown, Rhaegal's current size still makes him one of the most dangerous creatures in the world. With unparalleled movement, capabilities, and breathing fire, Rhaegal can be anywhere on the field and kill anything he wishes. Okay, so you can't take him if somebody, if, if Danny's not in your army. I mean, there are other characters as well, like Khal Drogo and a few other characters. Um, so, you have to have Danny. I mean, that makes sense, right? They wouldn't follow anyone else. Viserion is named for Daenerys Targaryen's brother Viserys. Oh, sorry. Rhaegar's not the dick. Viserys is. <laughs> My apologies to Rhaegar. <laughs> or am I correct? I don't know. It's been too long. Okay, he's often called the White Dragon, yet is cream-colored with golden horns and crest. His claws and teeth are shining black, and his eyes are pools of molten gold. That makes sense. Viserys must be the guy I was thinking of. While nowhere near fully grown, Viserion is one of the deadliest creatures in the world, with unparalleled movement capabilities and breathing fire. Viserion can be anywhere. Okay, the end part is going to repeat. And Drogon. For called Drogon. Drogon is named for Daenerys Targaryen's deceased husband. His scales are solid black with blood red horns and crest. His eyes are described as smoldering red pits. Well, nowhere near fully grown. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. <laughs> We've read it twice already. Okay, they are awesome. Let's see if this describes. guessing they are separate units, right? They don't move together, and they each cost nine, I would think. Okay. So it's 27 just for this. <laughs> but wow. I mean, they could screw somebody's day up. Okay, so friendly dragon within short range may make a free attack. Mm. So what do you do? Stick her with some unsullied, perhaps. Be about the right amount of points, I'm thinking. Okay, Dragon's Flight. Basically lets them move more. And Fire Made Flesh. Okay, halves the wounds that they take. The heir of House Targaryen, if her 
every unit is destroyed, it grants additional victory points. And let's see. So, okay, the tactics board is that board I was talking about. Um, you can use, like, NPC characters that don't have, like, a battlefield role on the um, tactics board. There's different sections. I'll, I'll show that whenever I actually do a video about the game. Oh, you can make this be the effect instead. Search your tactics deck or discard pile for one of our commander tactics cards. <laughs> so maybe you want another go at Drakaris. Very nice. Okay. So I'm guessing. Yeah, there's two versions. Dragon's version and Queen of Marine version. Alright. So the Queen of Marine version, she has Counterplot, Promise of Fire, and Targaryen Supremacy. So it sounds like she might be like more of a tactics one. Yeah, that's the tactics symbol. Like the NPC tactics. That's like she goes in a unit. Uh, she begins the game with two order tokens when an enemy combat unit makes a morale test. Da, 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 da. Okay, make it harder to pass morale tests. Why do the gods make kings and queens if not to protect the ones who can't protect themselves? mother of dragons. You have to have all of the dragons. But they cost two less. Oh, that's awesome. So it's only 18 to have her as your commander and all the dragons. Oh, that is cool. Okay, we'll be doing that for sure. Okay, so these are the three that you add into like the other these aren't the only cards that they would have, but they're like their unique character ones. Okay, let's see what they are. Um, these, you don't know what you're drawing from. You draw a certain amount. And then you can use them if, you know, sometimes they're very contextual. So sometimes you don't always get to use them all, but that's what them's the break. one of the spots on the tactics board. Okay, so you would probably coordinate to make sure you were on that spot. That could be helpful. Counterplot. Oh, that's awesome. So the tactics cards are these, right? So maybe the opponent has something really, really and terrible for you, and you want to just be like, nope. Okay, what an enemy, NC. Okay, NCU is how they call it, non-combat units. Not NPCs. My bad. You know, you play enough things, it's hard to remember the terms sometimes. Okay, select two zones on the board. If that NC, oh sorry, when an enemy. Select two zones on the board. If that NCU claims either zone is activation, one enemy combat unit becomes panicked. And then one enemy combat unit suffers a panic test. So this is two different units you're screwing up. I don't know. Are you having to declare this? I would want to know more info. Like, do you have to say which two zones? Or is it totally secret? If it is secret stopping you from saying, yeah, that's the one I picked. <laughs> well, I want to know more about that one, but um, they both seem awesome. I feel like I'm definitely going to try 
try this one first so that I can do the two less points per dragon. Alright, well that is going to do it for me for today. Coming up soon, you will be getting a couple of white dwarf videos. I've got, I actually unearthed this old Forge World catalog from five years ago, which I thought might be kind of fun to look at. <laughs> um, let's see, I have loads of things all, all set and ready to be talked about in videos, so any of that sounds like an interesting time to you. I would like to get back to some more magic. I have lots of older cards to unearth and go through. I've got, you know, recent cards that I want to kind of sort through, perhaps make some decks. I don't have any um, packs to open right now, but I, you know, I'm always open to that. If I see something I like, I it and do an unboxing for you. Well, a pack opening. So, I will see you again very soon with some White Dwarf and beyond. <laughs> Hopefully this has been somewhat relaxing and enjoyable, and I will see you again very soon.